The Black Diamond is kind of like a middle of the road package, similar to like an XLT on an F-150. So it's not the most expensive, but it's not the cheapest. Really it has the stuff that you need and not a lot of stuff that you don't. Hi, I'm Matt McMurray from Campus Automotive in Blacksburg, Virginia, and today I have my brand new 2021 Ford Bronco Black Diamond. So most of you knew that I, I ordered this, put in a reservation in July of 2020, and I took delivery in August of 2021. So it's been a long time. So I got some initial impressions about what I like and what I don't like. So stay tuned to the end to make sure you hear all that. A lot of you know that there was a huge recall on the hardtop. Luckily, I got mine before the recall and stop sale happened. Now I've got a bad hardtop that needs to be replaced, but instead of doing a stop sale and not taking delivery, I got to take delivery of mine, which was really cool because I've really been waiting a long time. In fact, I've waited so much, I was almost over it until I actually drove it. My initial impressions are, this is probably one of the most favorite vehicles that I've ever had. And I've had a lot of cars and trucks because I'm a used car dealer. And so I've been around lots of stuff and this is probably my favorite so far. So like I said earlier, this is a black diamond edition. I did select the mid package, which gives you keyless entry, heated seats, sync four with the eight inch screen, keyless remote start, and some other things with that mid package that really makes it kind of usable on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not the most expensive Bronco that you can buy and it's not the cheapest Bronco you can buy. It's somewhere in between and I think it's a good package and it's a good value for the money. So this particular Bronco was $45,575 full MSRP, but they range anywhere from the low 30s all the way up to $60,000. And I think at $60,000, is probably just too much for a vehicle like this because you really can buy some nice stuff if you pay that much money for it. So I would stay down kind of in the middle like this and it's very reasonable. So as you can see, I chose to get the 2.3 four cylinder EcoBoost, 300 horsepower on Supreme Fuel, 275 on regular fuel. I chose that because my brother is a master tech at the Ford garage and he, he told me that this is not a very problematic engine. The 2.7 V6 out of the F-150s has a few more problems. So I thought for the size and the weight of the vehicle that this would be appropriate. Turns out I was right. It's plenty of power, the 10 speed automatic, it shifts perfectly, does a great job. There's less complexity under the hood. You can actually see that there's an engine there. There's room to work on it if you had to. Turbos on this side mounted high. All the electronics and the computers you can see are mounted high. Got a good high intake right here in the front. So that keeps the water out of the engine. They really took their time and designed this really well to keep all that stuff up and out of the way. You can even see that these tie down hooks are mounted to the structure of the inner fender. That's why they have that 150 pound rating if you need to tie down something. So most of these tubes are coolant hoses. These tubes right here are for the turbo. You see that the battery is mounted up front up high and out of the way right here. Fuse block up high, out of the way. Big time connectors up high, out of the way. Back here in this back corner of the engine bay, these are all your wires for your auxiliary switches that are up in the panel that come with that mid package. If you have accessories like extra fog lights or air horn or any kind of extra accessory, strobe light, anything, you, you wire them up right here. And what that does is it goes in directly to your cab to those auxiliary switches. Brake master cylinder, plenty of brakes on this truck. It runs good. So it's got an aluminum hood, super light to lift up and down. It does have a prop rod instead of gas struts, but it's so light that it doesn't really matter. If any of you have ever driven a new Toyota Tacoma, and lifted the hood on it, it's about 10 times heavier than the hood on this Bronco. All these body panels are modular and they just bolt on and bolt off super easy. So if you damage one, you get it painted and you can just bolt it on. You don't have to be a super high skilled body technician to be able to do that. These fender flares, they clip on and clip off. I think that's super cool. Here's our tires, General Grabber ATX. This is the only package that this General Grabber comes on and it's the black diamond package. And it's 32 inch tire, 265, 70, 17. I think they're great. I think they're perfect for the size of the vehicles, especially when you opt for the 2.3 four cylinder. I think it's plenty appropriate. There's 
plenty of power, it rides good on the highway, it's fairly quiet, they've got good traction. I did opt for the aluminum, upgraded aluminum wheels because black diamonds come with steelies from the factory. So both of these control arms, upper and lower, are aluminum. That saves weight, but that's what makes it handle so well because this thing handles, it tracks down the road so straight and it handles so good for what it is. Like it's actually surprising because if you've ever driven a Wrangler Rubicon, they don't track very straight. They kind of wander all over the road, but these things are laser dead straight in the road. In fact, there's so straight that at times you'll get the warning that comes up in the dash that tells you to put your hands on the steering wheel so that's super interesting but i like the fact that you can just cruise down the highway with just one hand two fingers and just just roll without a lot of effort we got the frameless windows that allows it to be a whole lot lighter it also allows when you remove it you remove the bolts you can lift the you can lift the whole door up. There's bags for the doors. You can put them in the back if you want to, or you can just put them in the garage. It's super easy to do. They don't weigh a whole lot at all. I think that's pretty cool. You can see in the interior, the Black Diamond has the marine grade vinyl seats. And I'm pretty sure that the Black Diamond is one of the only models in the Bronco that has that, but it's gray and black and it's got blue stitching. I love the blue stitching. I love the blue accents, because you know Campus Automotive is blue. Love all the blue accents. Different ranges and different models of the Bronco have different color accents. Some have orange, some have red, some have gray, but this one has blue. I thought that was really cool. Rubber floor, so we can spray in, spray out if we need to. I doubt that I'll ever put any water in this floorboard, but you can do it nonetheless. Now me personally, I probably would have chose carpet because you know I keep my stuff nice and keep it clean and you're probably not gonna see me do a lot of crazy stuff with it. But uh, I think with this rubber all weather floor mat that's in there, on top of that, I think that it's protected well and it's, it's fine, I'm okay with it. You can see grab handles on the end of the dash, grab handles back here to get in and out. You can see it's a little bit tight. This is my driving position right here. So a full size adult, sitting in this back seat, it would be kind of tight. So I would have to move my seat up just a little bit to accommodate them. These seats do fold down fairly flat. There's your window switches inside on the back of the console. You also have AC power back here. Plus you have USB and USB-C so you can charge your devices. On the back of the seat, they have a system for the Moly straps. If you have something that you want to mount on here, an accessory, you do get a little net here, a little mat pocket net there. A full-size Atlas won't stay still there, but nonetheless, it's still a little something for a little storage. I love the color scheme of these seats. I like the charcoal gray. I like the darker black. I like the blue accents. One of my favorite things about this car is these seats. I think they're soft. Um, they do look like a boat seat, so you can wipe them off pretty easily. Um, I think I think I just really, I really like it. It's one of my favorite things about the whole truck. It's really well designed and thought out. Capless fuel fill right here. Just stick your gas hose in right there. No problem. Do have some Easter eggs here with the old school Broncos right here. I think that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. You have to open the bottom of the tailgate before you open the window. The window just folds down and the tailgate holds it into place. There's plenty of storage back here, different cubbies and everything. So you got two of your rear speakers right here on this back rail. Cause you can't really mount them to the doors because if you take the doors off, then you wouldn't have any speakers. So they mount them to this back roll cage. You see the bolts to unbolt the rear section of the hard top. Got a 12 volt accessory outlet right here. Little fog light right here. A couple little cubbies on each side. Now, when you take this hard top off, one of the really cool features is here's your plug for your electrical and here's your hose for your washer fluid. And what you do is when you take this top off, you plug your electrical into here and you plug your washer fluid into here and it gives it a place to live while the top's off of it. Of course, you got a cubby right here. Underneath the floor, you have a small little cubby here. All right. Shut your glass first. And shut your tailgate. 
rear mounted spare tire, two tow hooks on the back, and the towing package, which is extra. And the only reason I selected that is to tow a small trailer or maybe put a bike rack or something on it, or maybe put another, or maybe put another tow hook on it. Cool little Bronco emblem on the back here. I like that, I think that's really cool. Again, the same thing we talked about on the other side. You can see that there's no rail from this B pillar to the other B pillar, like on a Wrangler. So this is all open, which is awesome. You can see, just look right straight up in the air and see anything. You don't feel like you got anything over your head. It's just, it's just designed awesomely. One thing you gotta remember that when you take these doors off and put them back on, you need to have the car off. So, cause you don't wanna be unplugging and plugging stuff while the car is actually running. So all your window switches are up here in the console. That way when you take the doors off, you can roll these down first before you take the doors off and unplug them. Dual zone climate control, auto start stop, your goat modes in your four wheel drive system right here behind your shifter. Right up here is your rear locker then trail turn assist, traction control off. There's an accessory mount right here if you want to mount a GoPro or a phone mount. I don't think I want to mount anything here because it stays right in your field of view, but I do think there needs to be a place to put a phone and there's really not a place to really put a phone. So I, I got a WeatherTech cup phone that's taken up one of my cup holders and that works great 90% of the time unless somebody's with you and they have something to drink and then it becomes an issue because then you just have to lay your phone in the console. It's got wireless CarPlay on the Sync 4, which I'm not real crazy about because I feel like it's kind of glitchy, but it just doesn't, um, it's not like a Uconnect system on my Ram that works kind of flawlessly, but it's a plug-in, it's not wireless. This is kind of, doesn't quite work the same. So it's a little bit disappointing the way that it works. The stereo is all right. I mean, it's it's not the high level Lux package. So it's just it's got the basic Sync 4 system. So it kind of sounds like you're listening to the stereo in a Folgers can. Another thing that I don't like is when you, when the top's on it and the windows are up, they, when you pull, they index into the roof, into the weather strip. So when you pull the handle, the window's got to drop slightly so you can open the door. Well, it doesn't happen fast enough, so it drags against that weather strip, so it kind of pulls on the window. So long-term, I don't know what the consequences of that's going to be, but it could be an issue for those windows. So when I'm in the driver's seat and I'm going to open my door with the windows up, I'll pull the handle and then just slightly move it out, give it a second, then open the door. That way it doesn't seem like it drags as much. You know, that's kind of a feature that I, I'm not too crazy about. The stereo, I'm not too crazy about. I'm not crazy about how this tag mounts. They couldn't mount the tag down here because this is one of your main sensors for your ADOS, which I don't like it. it kind of looks weird up here in the grill like this. Not every state has a front and rear tag. We do, unfortunately, this is where it's gotta live. Just not too crazy about that. Do love these great big tow hooks. Like there, you could probably hang this Bronco upside down by these big tow hooks if you had a clevis hook properly weighted. Got plenty of skid plating underneath it. Aluminum control arms like we talked about before. It's just good. I like the stance of it. It just looks strong. And the difference between a Bronco and a Jeep, Jeeps have a lot more fender on the front and the Bronco, the body kind of is wider and comes out to the outside of the car. So I really like that. That's super cool. 2.3 EcoBoost is awesome. 10 speeds, awesome. Four wheel drive system is awesome. It was straight line down the highway incredibly well. You can drive 80, 85 miles an hour. No problem in this car. It is a little bit loud because of the removable top, but you can live with it. Bluetooth doesn't work really well talking on the phone when you're at highway speeds because there's a roar kind of from the wind and people kind of get distracted a little bit from it. I do like the white letters, Bronco across the front. There's no question about what kind of car this is. Like it's a Bronco. There it is. Headlights are great. They're plenty bright. Love the seats. Even though my seats are manually adjusted, it fits perfectly. I love the ergonomics of the car, where my feet are compared to my hips, to my shoulders. I love how everything is right there within reach, really close. It's an awesome car to drive around town because it's not very big. I'm used to a big Ram Heavy Duty, so everything is a pain in a Ram Heavy Duty, like going to the bank drive through going to the grocery store, going to McDonald's, like everything's a pain on a big truck. But this, you can kind of zip through town and 
it's pretty awesome. I do think that it probably can't be your only vehicle. It probably needs to be a second vehicle because there's some limitations, particularly on, you know, if you're, if you drive really long distances, like if you drive, take trips that are 12, 13, 14 hours on a regular basis, this will probably wear you out just from the noise and kind of the, the vibration of it, probably wear you out by the time you're there. So, but if you're not, and you're just an around the town type person and you love to drive off road, then this is probably could be your only vehicle. There's one more little Easter egg in the cab I want to show you. All right, so here's your gauge cluster. It does have a speedometer over here. I find that I don't watch it over here. I watch it right here in this screen. You would think this big screen would be a lot more configurable than it really is. It's not. You can see my fuel mileage over the first 3,600 miles is averaging 20.5, which I think is great for what we're talking about and what it is. Eight inch sync four system. Works pretty good, pretty snappy when you when you press something, it works like it's supposed to do. It's got some cool apps on it, satellite radio. And you can also make your presets, regular radio and satellite radio on the same presets where only you connect, you can't do that. Here's your four wheel drive and your goat modes, downhill sister control, American flag on the back of the shifter. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. Heated seats. This is a switch to turn off your auto stop start right there. That's cool because I always turn it off because I don't like it stopping on me in an intersection because I like the jackrabbit start, which is probably not a good idea, but that's the way I roll. Interior overall, like there's some plasticky bits to it and the material quality is not really good, but what it's designed to do is be extremely durable in extreme conditions. These buttons are kind of weird the way they feel, but they're okay. It's interesting that on a, on a Ram and a Chrysler product, the volume's on the right side and the switch for the stations is on the left side, so it's exactly the opposite. And what I find myself doing is wanting to switch with my left hand because I drive with my left hand in this position right here. And I can't do, I can do it on my Ram, but I can't do it on this. So that's a little interesting little tidbit.